Hey, what's up? This is Peng from LabVIEW by Example. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do stuff over and over and over again in LabVIEW. And if you watch one of my last videos, again. But instead of a for loop, I'm going to go cover uh, while loops in this video. So a while loop is a control flow statement that allows code to be executed repeatedly based on a given Boolean condition. The while loop can be thought of as a repeating if statement. Um, here is a flow diagram of a while loop. And as you can see, the same block of code continues to execute until the A condition becomes false. Um, you usually use while loops when you don't know exactly how many times you're going to do a certain task or don't know how many things uh, that uh, you're going to be processing. So, for example, if you're reading lines from a text file, um, you can use a while loop to read each line until you hit some special marker uh, telling you when it's the end of the file. Okay, so before diving into the LabVIEW world, let's see how a text-based language does this. So I have a, a Visual Studio project up, uh, C Sharp Windows Form. And in this example, I'm going to create a yellow uh, blinking traffic light that you sometimes see if power goes out uh, at an intersection. So I've already placed down three buttons and to simulate lights, so the program will set the back color of these buttons. Uh, well, actually just a yellow button. Uh, and then there's a stop button. And I'll go and use this checkbox uh, in the second half of this demo. So the stop button is going to stop the while loop. So let's take a look, look at the code of this form. Okay. To make things simple, I'll work inside the constructor which launches at the very beginning of the application. Um, so I created a private method that will contain our while loop. Uh, so what I'm going to do is create a um, local variable that's going to keep a uh, the state of the um, uh, the color of the yellow button. So let's do bool state equals false. Okay, so I'm going to create a while loop. And in this while loop, I'm going to tell it to keep doing things until a stop flag equals false. Okay, and then in here, what we're going to do is going to first negate the state with a not operator. Okay, so you can go from false to true, true to false. Then I'm going to use this if statement to change the color of the button. So yellow dot back color equals so an off color for me is this olive else okay and after this we want to um, add a delay So that we'll see the blinking. Let's do 500 milliseconds there. Okay. So since I'm using the await keyword, uh, I have to use the async here. Um, I will need to create a stop flag private variable, which I already did here. And then on the stop uh, button click, uh, method. I'm going to set that stop flag equals to true. Okay. So here, let's 
um, set the stuff flag equals to false before we call the while loop function. Okay, so I think that looks good. And let's run. Okay. So if I hit stop, the blinking stops, we're good to go. Okay. So what if I change the code to check for a checkbox value instead of a stop flag? So let's let's try this out. So I already have a checkbox down here. So in the code, instead of checking for the stop flag, which is set to true by the button, let's check the um, checkbox. So checkbox dot one dot checked. If this is equal to true, well, if it's, that's right. If it's equal to false, then continue. So let's go. Okay. And I've hit that, it stops. Okay. All right. So what happens if this is initially true? So let's go to this guy and set the check value equal to true and run. As you see, no blinky light. All right, so why is this important? Um, so that's the difference between a while loop and a do while loop. A do while loop will always run its uh, code once, and and then it will check for the um, uh, condi the true false condition. Okay. So here's an uh, flow diagram of how that works. So uh, the um, task that you're doing always runs at least once and then the check is done and then it comes back uh, either true or false. So if I change my while loop in my code to do to be a do while, uh, let's see what happens. So the way you do that in C sharp is you move this guy down here and you make this into a do. So as you can remember, this was checked first, and let's run it. Okay, and as, as you can see, you have one transition from false to true or for the yellow. Okay. All right, so you may be asking, uh, why am I showing you a do while loop? Good question. Because, drum roll, you can only place down do while loops in LabVIEW. Interesting, huh? All right, so let's bring up LabVIEW. Um, so if I've already placed down a VI uh, with uh, some Boolean v uh, LEDs uh, based on a prior video, video I did uh, la uh, on case structure structures. So take a peek of that. Peek at, peek, take a peek at that video if you need to see how I set up the colors for these um, LEDs. So looking at the block diagram, these Boolean, these are Boolean indicators. So um, it's a little bit different from the C sharp example, where here I can actually just set the value and the, and the color changes based on the uh, um, Boolean value. So to draw a while loop, left click, or well, right click to get the functions palette and then click on the structures and while loop. And the cursor is going to change. So left click and drag to draw your while loop. So a while loop consists of an iteration terminal here, which is this I. And, and this I is going to start from zero and automatically increments by one every time you go through the loop. Um, so this is similar to how the for loop uh, operates. 
It also contains a conditional terminal shown by the stop symbol here. So if this is set to a true value, the loop will stop and a false will uh, continue to run whatever is inside this sub diagram. And a sub diagram is whatever code is inside this gray border here. Okay. All right. So now we uh, need to keep track of what this um, yellow light state is going to be. So what, what we need to do is create a variable uh, and what we can do here is create a Boolean constant for that. So let's go ahead and do that. Just initially set that to false. Okay. To set, uh, to pass the value from iteration, what do we need? A shift register. Uh, and I covered uh, shift registers in another video uh, when I was talking about for loops. So you can pause this video and check out that video if you need to. So shift registers work exactly the same for while loops. Um, so basically here we need to remember what this Boolean value is from iteration to iteration. So let me create a shift register by right clicking and saying uh, create add shift register. I'll wire the initial value uh, with this false constant like so. Okay. Now when we move into the while loop, I'll wire the not operation here to this guy. Okay. And then this is wired to the yellow here. Okay. And then we want to take the um, result back to the next iteration here. Okay. So this is going to get us the false, true, then false, well, true, false uh, pattern that we want. Okay. So we want to add a delay so that we'll see the blinking oops, occurring. We use a wait for that. Okay, and for our um, just, just to see, see to, to know what iteration that we're in, let's create a indicator to this um, I terminal here. So I can just right click it and create indicator so that I'll know what I is. Okay. And then finally, we need to wire the stop button's value to the stop terminal of the while loop. So this is a little bit different from C sharp because in lab you can actually just read the Boolean value of, of uh, any button directly from the terminals uh, on the block diagram. Um, in C sharp, in the C sharp example, you couldn't exactly do that. Okay. Let's save and run. As you can see, we have a blinking yellow light, and I is incrementing on every um, every iteration through this while loop. Okay, hit stop. All right. So remember how I told you this was really a do while uh, structure. So let's show that in action. So in LabVIEW, you can set the initial state of any of your buttons and indicators at design time and then run. So that means that I can set the stop button's value to true before hitting the run button. So I'm setting this to true first. And what should happen is that the, so as you can see, you can set any of these uh, before you run as well. Um, so what should happen here is just like the C sharp example, this yellow button uh, yellow light should turn on once since it's a do while pattern. Okay, so it ran once and then it stopped. So as you can see, 
uh, probably guess from looking at the while loop, the code in the sub diagram executes and then the stop condition is evaluated. Um, so the check for this stop isn't done before um, this code is executed per uh, the rules of data flow in LabVIEW, which I'll probably cover in a later video. So that's why this is really a do while pattern here. Okay. Okay, so what should you do if you really need to implement the while pattern rather than the do while pattern? So the workaround is putting all your code um, in the sub diagram uh, in a case structure and wiring the stop condition wire um, to that uh, selected terminal of the case structure. So let, let me do that now. So what I'm gonna do is put the code uh, that's uh, running inside the while loop in the case structure. So let's move things around here. Okay, and let's get our case structure here. Okay, I can move this over here so I can tee it off. Okay. And like so. So if the stop is false, so let's make this the false case, uh, which means that no why that the button wasn't pressed, then let's go ahead and uh, set the light value. But if it's true, do nothing. So uh, as you can remember with uh, case structures, if you have a open um, tunnel you have to wire it so in the fall in the true case let's just wire this across here so it's just taking the value of that boolean and passing it across uh, we don't really care what happens when it hits stop uh, but uh, based on the rules we have to wire it over okay so now if I reset that and set that to true this light shouldn't come on okay so it stops immediately and it, and it never um, ran this more than once okay so if I keep this unpressed and I hit run you can see it uh, behaves like before okay all right congratulations you now know what while loops are in LabVIEW. Um, so that's a pretty major step because while loops play a, a big role in creating LabVIEW graphical user interfaces, says, which probably is going to excite a lot of you. Um, don't worry, we'll get into creating cool UIs in later videos, but uh, let's wrap this one up for now. All right, uh, please add your likes and comments below or just go to labviewbyexample.com for more tips, tricks, and videos about uh, LabVIEW. And remember, you too can be LabVIEW awesome. Thanks for watching. Until next time.